a man spake these words and said, I am a paleontologist, wandering from a way down east to sojourn in a strange land. And behold, I have seen the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Yeah, verily, I saw him. And bear witness that from the key of his uh, snout to the end of his tail, his whole body hath, pa hath passed before me. And I followed him until his huge feet stood before a clapboard shanty, and then with his trunk extended and pointing to a candle card tacked upon a shingle, as though he would say, Read. And I read the paleontologist's Ten Commandments. Commandment 1. Thou shalt have no other claim or dig site but one. Second Commandment. Thou shalt not make unto thyself any false diggings, nor any likeness to a mean man, by jumping one. For I, a paleontologist, am, just, uh, am a just one, and will visit the miners around about, and, will, and they will judge thee. And when they shall decide, thou shalt take thy pick, thy uh, brush, thy shovel, and thy blankets with all thou hast, and shall depart seeking other good diggings but thou shalt find none. Then when thou hast paid out all thy uh, fossils, worn out thy boots and garments, so that there is nothing good about them but the pockets, and thy patience is like unto thy garments, then in sorrow shalt thou return to find thy claim worked out, and yet thou hast no pile to hide in the ground, or in the old boot beneath thy bunk, or in the buckskin, or bottle beneath thy cabin, or at last thou shalt hire thy body out to make thy board and serve thy bacon. Third commandment. Thou shalt not go fossil hunting before thy claim gives out. Neither shalt thou take thy money, nor thy fossils, nor thy good name, to the gaming table in vain. For Monte 21, Roulette, Faro, Lansquinet, and poker will provide to thee that the more thou puttest down the less thou shalt take up and when thou thinkest of thy wife and children and colleagues thou shalt not hold thyself guiltless but insane fourth commandment thou shalt not remember what thy friends do at home on the sabbath day lest the remembrance may not compare favorably with what you thou doest there, here. Six days thou may dig it or pick, but the other day is Sunday or Friday. Yet thou washest all dirty shirts, darnest all stockings, tap thy boots, mend thy clothing, chop the whole week's firewood, make up and bake thy bread, and boil the pork and beans, that thou wait not when thou returnest from thy long tom weary, for in six days labor only thou canst do it in six months. And though and thy morals and thy conscience be none the better for it, but reproach thee, shouldst thou ever return with thy worn out body to thy mother's fireside. The fifth commandment. Thou shalt not think of more, think more of all thy gold and how that thou canst make it fastest, then how thou wilt enjoy it after thou hast ridden roughshod over thy good old parents' uh, precepts and examples, and thou mayest have nothing to reproach thee when left alone in the land where thy father's blessings and thy mother's love hath sent thee. Number six, thou shalt not kill, neither shall thy body be working in the rain, even though thou shalt make enough to buy physic and attendance with, nor thy neighbor's body in a duel, or in anger, for uh, by keeping coal thou canst save his life and thy conscience. Neither thou shalt, shalt thou destroy thyself by getting tight, nor stewed, nor high, nor corned, nor hasties over, nor three sheets in the wind, by drinking smoothing down brandy slings, gin cocktails, whiskey punches, rum toddies, nor eggnogs. Neither thou shalt thou suck mint juleps, nor sherry cobblers through a straw, nor gurgle from a bottle the raw material, nor take it straight 
from a decanter, for gurgle from a bottle, for while thou art swallowing down thy purse and the coat from off thy back, thou art burning the coat from off thy stomach. And if thou couldst see the houses and the lands, the, the fossils and home comforts already lying there, a huge uh, digging, thou shouldest feel a choking in thy throat. And when to that thou addest thy crooked walkings, thou wilt feel disgusted with yourself, and inquire, Is thy servant a dog, that he doeth these things? Verily, thou shalt say, Farewell, old bottle. I will kiss thy gurgling lips no more. Slings, cocktails, punches, smashes, cobblers, nogs, toddies, sangarees, and juleps, forever farewell. Thy remembrance shames one. Henceforth I cut the acquaintance and headaches, tremblings, heartburnings, blue devils, and all the unholy catalog of evils not following thy train. My wife smiles, and my children's merry-hearted laugh shall charm and reward me for having the manly firmness and courage to say, No, I wish thee eternal farewell. The Seventh Commandment Thou shalt not grow discouraged, nor think of going home before thou hast made thy pile, because thou hast not struck an iron stone, nor found a rich diggings, nor sunk a hole upon a pocket, lest in going home thou shalt leave four dollars a day, and going to work ashamed at fifty cents, and serve thee right, for thou knowest by staying here you mightest strike a fossil and fifty dollars a day and keep thy manly self-respect, and then go home with enough to make thyself and others happy. The Eighth Commandment Thou shalt not steal a pick, or a shovel, or a brush from thy fellow paleontologist, nor take away his tools without his leave, nor borrow those he cannot spare, nor return them broken, nor trouble him to fetch them back again, nor talk with him while his water rent is running on, nor remove his stake, to enlarge thy uh, diggings, nor undermine his bank in following a uh, iron rock's deposit, nor uh, brush out gold from his, or fossils from his riffle box, nor wash the tailings from his sluice's mouth. Neither shalt thou pick out specimens from the company's pant, uh, brush to put them in your mouth or in your pocket, nor cheat your partner of his share, nor steal from thy cabin mate his fossils and add to thine. For he will be sure to discover what that ha thou hast done, and will straight away call his fellow paleontologists together, and the law enforcement. And if the law hinder them not, will hang thee, or give thee thy fifty lashes, or shave thy head and brand thee like a horse thief with an R upon thy cheek, to be known and read by all men, paleontologists in particular. Thou shalt not uh, commandment number nine, that is. Thou shalt not tell any false tales about good diggings in the mountains to thy neighbor, that thou mayest benefit a friend who had cars, provisions, and tools, and blankets he cannot sell, lest in deceiving thy neighbor, when he returneth through the snow, with not save his rifle, he present thee with the contents thereof, and like a dog thou shalt fall down and die. <laughs> the tenth commandment. Thou shalt not commit unsuitable matrimony, nor covet single blessedness, nor forget absent maidens, nor neglect thy first love. But thou shalt consider how faithfully and patiently she awaiteth thy return. Yea, and covereth each epistle that thou sendest with kisses of kindly welcome, until she hath thyself. Neither shalt thou, thou cover thy, co cove thy neighbor's wife, nor trifle with the affections of his daughter. Yet, if thy heart be free, and thou dost love and covet each other, thou shalt pop the question like a man. A new commandment I give unto thee. It's ten and a half, basically. If thou hast a wife and little ones, that thou lovest dearer than life, then thou keep them uh, continually before thee, to cheer and urge you thee onward, until thou canst say, I have enough, God bless them, I will return. Then from thy much-loved home, with open arms, shall thy come forth to welcome thee, with weeping tears of unutterable joy, and thou art come. Then in the fullness of thy heart's gratitude, thou shalt kneel together before the Heavenly Father, or none, or in front of a fire tree if you're an atheist, who cares, 
to thank him for thy safe return. Amen. So mote it be.